Ayan. So, kamusta mga soke? Una-una sa lahat, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga nanood, tumatanggilik sa aking video tutorials. At lalo po akong ginaganahan sa mga comments, suggestions na, na naririnig ko mula sa aking mga kaibigan, lahat ng kakilala, kahit mga hindi ko kakilala. Napakaganda po ng impact. So, maraming maraming salamat po. At lalo na rin sa mga estudyante ko sa remedial class. Kakita ko lang na kayo ay nagpuporsige sa pag-aaral at natututo sa mga videos na ginagawa ko ay um, nawawala lahat ng pagod ko. Maraming maraming salamat. And of course, maraming salamat din sa mga volunteer ng mga estudyante na tumutulong sa akin upang may sagawa ang remedial class na ito. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. And to those of you na nanonood, na kahit hindi kasama sa remedial class ko, maraming salamat din sa inyo. Don't worry, marami pa po tayong mga nakaline up na math video tutorials. Dadami po itong mga videos na to. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtangkilik. Sana po uh, subscribe ninyo ang, mga vid ang aking channel. I-like yung mga videos, panoorin nyo po. At bigyan nyo ako ng comments and suggestions para po ma-improve natin ang mga susunod pang videos. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ang dahilan kung bakit ayaw ng mga estudyante na mag-evaluate ng limit of a function gamit ang tabular method ay dahil masyado itong mahaba, masyado itong maraming compute. Imagine, kailangan mong computein, kailangan mong i-evaluate ng paulit-ulit yung, uh, yung isang function gamit ang iba't ibang value para malaman mo lang kung pareho ang tinutumbok ng kaliwa at ng kanan ng function. Masyadong nakaubos ng oras, nakaubos ng ballpen, nakaubos ng papel. E paano kung wala ka pang calculator? E di wala. E di mas mahirap pang buhay. Maniwala man kayo at hindi sa akin, ang mga mathematically inclined people ay ganun din ang pakiramdam nila. Ayaw nila ng mahabang sulatin. Ayaw nila ng mahabang computation dahil tamad kaming magsulat. Ngayon, dahil tamad kami magsulat, mag-iisip kami ng ibang paraan para mas mapadali ang solution. Maghanap ng ibang shortcut, ng ibang paraan para hindi ganun maubos ang oras. Dahil time is gold. By the way, kamusta nga pala sa grade 12 gold ng Pinahis? Kamusta kayo? So, yun din ang dahilan kung bakit na-invento na ni Blaise Pascal ang calculator. Dahil ang tatay niya ay isang tax collector at nakikita niya ang tatay niya na nahihirapang mag-compute ng mga taxes na, na, na nakokolekta niya. So, inisip niya kailangan niya gumawa ng isang mechanical machine para matulungan ng tatay niya sa pagkocompute. At doon na nga nagsimula ang calculator. Isang mechanical machine na ang kaya lamang compute ay addition and subtraction. And the rest is history. So, anong point ko dito? Dahil tamad magsulat ang mga mathematicians, nag sila ng mas madaling paraan, mas shorter na paraan, upang ma-evaluate ang limits ng function. Dahil dyan, gumamit sila ng algebra. At dyan ipinanganak ang limit theorems na mayiging topic natin ngayon. So, yun po ang pag-usapan natin ngayon, limit theorems. I prepared 8 theorems para i-explain sa inyo. And, sana maunawa ninyo So, ano pang hinihintay nyo? Simulan natin to Pasok intro. Pag-usapan naman natin ngayon ang limit theorems. These theorems will help you evaluate limits using the algebraic method. There are several 
theorems that I'm going to discuss, pero simulan muna natin dito sa tatlo. Okay? So, unahin na natin dito sa limit of a constant. So, limit of a constant, let's say a is a constant, and the limit of a as x approaches c is equal to a, or it is equal to the number itself. Let's say the limit of 2 as x approaches 3. So this will become 2. The limit of a constant is the, num is the constant itself. So the limit of 2019 as x approaches 4 is equal to 2019. The limit of 51 as x approaches negative 1 is also 51. Again, the limit of a constant is the constant itself. Kung ano yung constant, yun din yung sagot. Next, the second one is the limit of x. The limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c. Therefore, in these examples, the limit of x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Kasi isasubstitute lang natin yung value ng x na negative 1. So, limit of x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Next, the limit of x as x approaches 1987 is equal to 1987. The limit of x as x approaches pi is equal to pi. Sinasubstitute lang natin yung value ng c dun sa x. That's why the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c. The third one is the constant multiple th uh, theorem. The limit of ax, again, a is a constant. The limit of ax as x approaches c is equal to a. Lalagay natin sa unahan ng limit yung a. Then, multiplied, multiply natin yung a sa limit ng x, kung ano man yung limit ng x. Okay, so let's uh, take this example. Limit of 3x as x approaches 2. So meron tayong constant, meron tayong x. So therefore, ilalagay natin sa unahan si 3. Imamultiply natin siya dun sa limit of x as x approaches 2. Ano ba ang limit of x as x approaches 2? This is 2. So 3 times 2 is equal to 6. The second example, the limit of negative 2 x as x approaches negative 1. So the constant here is negative 2. So lagay natin sa unang si negative 2. Multiply natin sa limit ng x. Pwede ko nang hindi isulat yung tuldok na yun. Limit ng x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to negative 2, copy natin yung, con yung constant na negative 2, multiplied by the limit of x as x approaches negative 1, which is negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is equal to positive 2. Then the third one, the limit of negative x as x approaches negative 4. So if you can notice, mukhang walang constant dito. Pero may constant dyan, that's 1, negative 1. Hindi lang natin sinulat yung 1 kasi sa algebra, pwede nang hindi sulat yung 1 kapag 1 lamang yung numerical coefficient. So ano lang yung gagawin natin dyan? Ilalagay lang natin sa unahan yung negative. So negative, limit ng x as x approaches negative 4 is equal to negative times ano yung limit ng x as x approaches negative 4 that's negative 4 negative times negative is positive so maging sagot natin dyan is positive 4 so those are the first three limit theorems
The fourth one is the limit of the sum and difference functions. So, ginagamit ito usually sa mga polynomial function. Like, uh, let's say there are two functions, uh, f of x and g of, uh, g of x. We have the assumptions here. Let's say the limit of f of x as x approaches c is L. And the limit of g of x as x approaches c is M. So, we can say that the limit of the sum or the difference of the f of x and g of x as x approaches c is equal to L plus M. So, para sa inyo na medyo nahihirapang umunawa ng mga gantong uri ng uh, algebraic expression, so ang sinasabi lang dito, na kapag ka merong sum or difference ng function, katulad nito, kukunin mo lang yung limit ng unang function, and then kukunin mo yung limit ng pangalawang function, then pe-perform yung operation ng dalawa. In this case, at the limit of f of x, plus g of x or f of x minus g of x is equal to the limit or L plus or minus M. Example, para mas maunawa natin. So let's say we have the first example. We have f of x is 2x, g of x is equal to 5x squared. Therefore, the limit of 2x minus 5x squared as x approaches negative 1 is... Uh, i-apply natin yung naunang tatlo. Okay? So, uh, paghihiwalay natin sila. So, this will become the limit of 2x as x approaches negative 1 minus the limit of 5x squared as x approaches negative 1. Simplify natin gamit yung pinag-aralan natin kanina. Kapag may constant sa unahan, lalagyan natin sa unahan yung 2. Then the limit of x as x approaches negative 1. Minus, lagyan natin sa unahan yung 5. 5 times the limit of x squared as x approaches negative 1. So, simplify pa natin. This will become 2 times, ano ba yung limit ng x as x approaches negative 1? That's negative 1. So, times negative 1. Minus 5 times the limit of x squared we have negative 1 squared. Simplify pa natin. So this will become 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus this is 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1. So this will become positive 1. Then positive 1 times 5 is 5. Then negative 2 Minus 5. So, para mas simple, mas madali, para sa naman yung negative, ay di pagsamahin yan. Negative 7. So, kung di nyo ito naunawaan, yung ginawa ko dito, uh, gagawa ko ng video para sa operation ng sign numbers or integers. A second example, we have f of x is equal to x squared. So, may dalawa ulit tayo. We have x squared. G of x is 2x. Therefore, the limit of x squared plus 2x as x approaches 2 is what? So, ganun ulit yung gagawin natin katulad ng ginawa natin dito. So, limit ng x squared plus limit ng 2x as x approaches negative, as x approaches 2. So, this will become Limit of x squared. Kopya lang muna natin kasi mayroon pa tayong ayos hindi sa kabila. Plus, yung 2, lagi na sa unahan. 2, limit ng x as x approaches 2 is equal to 
uh, this will become 2 squared plus 2 times the limit of x as x approaches 2 is 2. So, making 2 times 2. So, this is 2 squared is 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. Sa pang example. So, medyo hirapan natin ng konti. Let's say we have uh, the limit of so shortcut na natin ah, 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 as x approaches negative 1. So i-apply natin lahat ng mga nakita natin mga theorems. So pag iwaiwalay natin sila, this will become the limit ng 3x squared as x approaches negative 1 minus limit ng 2x as x approaches negative 1 plus limit of 5 as x approaches negative 1. And then simplify natin. This will become 3 limit 3 times the limit of x squared as x approaches negative 1 minus 2 times the limit of x as x approaches negative 1 plus limit of 5 as x approaches negative 1. Ganyan mag-solve ng limits. And then, uh, this will become 3 3 times what? Uh, this will become negative 1 squared minus 2 times ang x natin is negative 1 plus ito, yung constant natin this will become 5 simplify again this will become 3 times Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 5. This will become 3 my negative negative may game positive yan plus 2 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 5, 7, uh, 10. So the limit is equal to 10. Okay?